Hey everyone, and welcome back to the React for Beginners series. In the last episode, we went over React components and the idea of JSX within each component. In this episode, we're going to go over passing props into our components, which will allow us to add all sorts of customization to our components and make them more dynamic. After last episode, we left off with a button section component that just encompasses three button components here. And then all we did is render this button section component within our app.jsx file. Right now, our button components are all identical, which doesn't make them extremely useful if we want to do any sort of customization. As you can see on the page here on the left, we have three numbers all just say big number. So how can we customize each component so that each one is still a button, but has its own properties? That's where props come in. For now, let's just get rid of our button section component and just render in a button instead, individually. And then on top of that, I just want to go ahead and delete all this extra stuff here that we got when we first created our app. So I'm just going to go up here, highlight all this from the div all the way to this last p tag, and just backspace and delete it so that we just have the component button that we made. And then we'll go ahead and save this page here. So we now just have one button on the page. And then let's go ahead and go into our button.jsx file. In normal JavaScript, these parentheses here next to the function name would specify where we could enter in our function arguments. In React, we don't use function arguments traditionally. Rather, we use them as what we call props to style our components. One of the common ways to do this is to literally just write props inside of our argument parentheses. So we're going to do just that and write it like this as P-R-O-P-S. So this props argument that we just made will represent an object. Anytime we want to access specific properties from our prop argument, all we would need to do is type prop and then the dot operator and then whatever our property name was. For example, let's say this component has two properties, text and color. To access our text property, we could do something like props.text and then to access color, we could do something like props.color like that. So now you're probably wondering how we actually give our components properties. And let me show you that. So to give your component specific properties, you have to give those properties when you render in your component. So if we go to our app.jsx file, we're rendering in our button component right here at this line. If we wanted to pass in a text and color argument, we could do it here in this render here. So let's first pass in a text argument. So to do that, within our actual tag here, let's write text equals, I'm just gonna say sample, oops, sample text like this. So anytime we wanna pass in a property, we need to write the name of the property we want, which we just called text, and then an equal sign, and then we need to specify curly brackets and then inside of the curly brackets, we can pass in whatever we want our text argument to be. Next, let's add a color argument in the same way that we added a text argument. So we're gonna just make a space here. We're gonna say color, and then we're gonna say equals curly brackets, and then inside we're gonna pass a string, and for that, we're just gonna say red. So this is the same idea. The property name we want is color, then we do an equal sign, then curly brackets, and then put whatever color we want inside the curly brackets. So now that we've specified our arguments in our actual component render, Let's go back to our component file itself to access them. So we'll go ahead and navigate to our button.jsx file. And I said a moment ago that to access text, we would need to do props.text, for instance, if we have a text prop. And to do color, we would just need to do props.color like this. So now one thing we want to do to make sure of is that we're writing props.text, for instance, to access the text property. It matches the spelling and capitalization exactly how we specified it in the component render. So we're accessing text here we wanna make sure that in app.jsx where we're rendering it, that we're making it the exact same word so it's text with all lowercase letters. If I were to, for instance, not make it match exactly and I did, let's say, text with a capital T like that, it wouldn't work because they're not spelled exactly the same. So just make sure that it matches in the component render and that it also matches within the actual component that you're using it in like this. Let's go ahead and just delete all this extra fluff here that we made last episode and let's actually put our props into action so you can see how they work. Inside of our p tag, instead of displaying this display string, let's go ahead and just delete this. And let's instead show our text property. So to do that, we still need to use curly brackets. And then all we need to do is type props.text like this. And then if we go ahead and save this file now, and then we also save our app.jsx file, you'll see that our website now updates. And notice how our button's text now reflects the property that we passed into it in app.jsx, which is just sample text. So all that our button component is effectively doing is just displaying whatever text property is passed into it as a property. So if I wanted to modify it, I could just go into app.jsx where we're actually rendering it, and I could just change this text argument here, and we could reflect it to anything that we want. So I could, for instance, say hi YouTube like this, and then I could go ahead and save the file, and you see that the button now updates to saying hi YouTube. Now, our component is dynamic and not static because we can pass in whatever text we want when we call it to render. 
We also passed in this color argument here. So let's actually now implement that argument. So let's go into our button.jsx file. And then to access it, we're actually gonna make some of our own inline CSS here. So to do inline CSS in JSX, all you need to do is make a style property in any tag you wanna put the CSS in. So for instance, I'm gonna go into our button tag. I'm gonna make a style property like this and then an equal sign. And then we need to write double squirrely brackets for any CSS that we wanna do. And then with this, we can specify any properties that we want as key value pairs like we would in any other object. So if I wanna have a background color property, I could type background color as this is how we would type it in JSX. And then I could do colon to show we're doing a key value pair. And then now we wanna access the color property that we passed in when rendering our component. So on the other side of this colon, I'm just gonna write props.color like this. And then if I go ahead and save this file here, we've now turned our button red. So we've now accessed both the text property and the color property. Before we go on, let me just quickly review what we've done so far. We passed a props argument into our function by just writing props inside of our function argument here. Then inside of our app.jsx file, where we actually render this component in, we've passed in two properties. We have text and then we have color. For text, we just wrote hi YouTube and for the color, we just passed in red. And then if we look back at our component file, which is just button.jsx, we've accessed those properties we've passed in by just typing props.text to access the text and then typing props.color to access the color using a little bit of CSS inline styling here. Now here's the neat thing about props. Now that we've passed in these props inside of our actual component file, we can make as many button components as we want and customize them each individually. So for example, let's go back into our app.jsx file and let's go ahead and take this button line here. I'm just gonna copy it and then I'm just going to paste it twice. Actually scratch that, I'm just gonna paste it once in here just so we have two buttons. And then uh, let's see, we wanna pass in just some text to our second button here. Let's just say something like I'm button two. And then for the color argument, let's just pass in another color. Let's just say purple like this. And then let's go ahead and save this file here. And now we have two buttons, each with their own unique text and color. So basically the idea with passing in props is that it gives us the ability to customize our components however we want. Because in our button.jsx file, I put props.text inside of our text here and then style the background color with props.color. This allows us to specify these properties when we render it in app.jsx by just passing in the properties when we render it here. Of course, we could always add more props if we wanted to. So what happens if we render a button component but don't specify the props that we need for it? So if we actually just go in this file here that we have, let's just copy this here. Just copy one of these lines and then paste it. And then we're gonna take away the props just so it is pretty much just an empty button component. And then if we go ahead and save this here, it looks like right here, we just have a completely empty button component. Because our component now relies on having both a text and color prop, we wanna make sure we're passing in both of these properties or else our component will have things missing from it, in our case, both the text and the color. So to fix this, we can just pass in more props. Let's just say text equals, and then for the text here, let's just say testing. And then for, let's pass in a color. And then for our color, let's just say green. And then save it. And now we have yet another button in our code. The point I'm trying to make with this example is that if you're gonna give a component props like we do in button.jsx, we wanna make sure we're passing in all those possible props wherever we render it in another component. Because if we don't, we're gonna be missing aspects of our component code. One of the interesting things about props is that you can also pass in functions as props instead of just data types like strings or numbers. To show you what I mean by this, let's actually make a function inside of our app.jsx. And yes, if you're curious, you can have functions inside this app function. The functions can be React components and return JSX, or they could just be normal JavaScript functions. For now, we're just gonna write a basic JavaScript function though. So to write this function, first I'm just gonna delete this use state line up here that we had from our initial code, just so we can get rid of it. And then I'm gonna write a function side of our code. I'm just gonna say function, let's just call it notify. We'll do our curly brackets to signify the writing of function. And then I'm going to add a message argument in here. That will be our notification. Inside this function, all we want to do is just type alerts message like this. So basically whenever we call this function, we just pass in a message to alert the user with, and that's all this function does. And then let's actually pass in this function that we have as a prop to our buttons. So inside of this first button here, I'm gonna add a uh, prop here. I'm gonna call it func just for function. And we're just gonna pass in the notify function that we just created. And then I'm gonna make another prop. I'm just gonna call it msg for message. And then I'm just gonna set it equal to button one message like this. Now that we've passed in a prop called func and also a prop called message or msg, 
Now, if we go inside of our button.jsx file, we can now access those using props.func and props.msg. So I'm actually gonna make an on click event here that'll help us call our function. So I'm gonna have a whole episode to handling events, so I won't get super deep into it now. But for now, inside of this button here, we're just gonna write an on click property. I'm gonna write on click, type it, equals, we'll do cur uh, curly brackets here. And then we're gonna write it like this. Say parentheses arrow props.func and then we're gonna pass in props.msg like this. Whenever we call this onclick property here, we need to pass in a function into our curly brackets here. So we are just passing in the function property that we pass in as props. And then that is equal to notify, because if you notice here, props.func, we passed in notify here. So inside this button component, props.func is equal to notify. And then inside of this, we're just passing in the message argument that we're also passing inside of our app. So props.message, which is equal to button one message because we pass it in here as a prop. If we make sure this file is saved and app.jsx is saved, and we now click on this first button, you'll see that it now pops up with an alert that just says button one message inside of it. So we gave button one a func property and a message property with these two right here. And then now we're just using this on click event to actually trigger that function within that argument. Let's say we wanna do a similar thing with button two. We could do the same thing. So button two, let's pass in a func and message argument as well. So I'm just gonna write func and then message like this. And then we're gonna pass in the same notify function, but instead of passing in button one message for this, for the message prop, let's just pass in button two message. So say button two message, just like that. Now, if we were to try and click button two, let's see it pops up with an alert at the top of the screen that says button two message. And then of course, if we could do button one again, and it would say button one message. And these are different because of the way that we're passing in props, because obviously this one has a message of button one message, and this is our first button. And then this one has a message of button two message, and this is our second button. So in addition to just passing in things like strings or numbers as props, you should now see how we can pass in functions as well. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't use functions as props very much in my React code, mainly because you typically wanna have components have functionality independent of each other, while passing in a function in one component like app.jsx to another subcomponent like button sort of makes their functionality sort of joint in a way. I will say though, when dealing with state, which we'll learn about in a future episode, there are some potentially interesting use cases for passing in functions as props to a component. One last thing I wanna go over with props is the idea of props destructuring. So destructuring is something that is very useful that I actually use quite a bit, and you may see other people use it a lot as well. Basically, instead of having one giant props object here, you can specify the actual props that you want more specifically. Here's how we can do that. So to destructure the props of a component, instead of just writing props in the component arguments here, we can instead replace this with just curly brackets like this, and then list out, list out each prop individually separated by commas. So we have four props that we have passing right now. We have text, and we'll say comma color, comma func, and then message like this. And again, we wanna make sure we use curly brackets here so the component doesn't get confused. Then if we do it this way, we can just remove any reference to our massive props object. So basically everywhere it says props, we'll just delete that and get the name of the actual props right here on props.txt. We can just delete that so it just says text. Um, we'll make sure this just calls func, and then this just calls msg, and then this just here calls color, like that. And then if we were to go ahead and save this page, Nothing actually changes because it, it is actually the exact same functionality, but you can see our page works in the exact same way. In my opinion now, I think the code looks a little bit cleaner. So basically by default, if you pass in a props argument into the parentheses here, it makes one huge object that holds every property inside that object, hence why we use the word props, and then the property name. But when we use curly brackets and write out the properties like this, in this way, we're destructuring that props object, which just means breaking it into its individual properties removing the need for any reference to an actual props object. So I'm a big fan of props destruction because I don't like having to type props every time I want to access a property before every property. But it's honestly just up to personal preference on what you want to do. Doing props the original way or doing props destructuring both yield the same results and there's no real right answer. So pick whatever way feels better to you. And with that, that pretty much wraps up this video for props. In this video, you learn how to pass props into components, which includes passing them in when we render them, as well as specifying them in our actual component file. You also learn how to pass in functions as props, as well as destructuring props as an alternative way of dealing with a props object. In the next video, we'll go over the idea of state, which is an incredibly important topic and one of the core features of React. I will see you in the next one.